Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Choosing the Right Orchestration, Orchestration Solution for Multi-Vendor Networks, sponsored by Anuda Networks. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. On the right-hand side of your screen is the Q&A. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can type your question into the Q&A box and submit your question to our speakers. All questions will be saved. So if we don't get to answer you, we may follow up via email at the bottom of your audience console on multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the yellow help widget. Here you can find answers to common questions. A copy of today's slide deck is available for download in the green resource list widget. Towards the end of today's presentation, we'll ask for your feedback. Our survey will pop open on your screen and will only take one minute to complete. Your feedback is extremely helpful. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available about one day at the event and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier today. I would now like to the event over to Heavy Reading Senior Analyst, Roz Lisboro. Roz? Great. Thanks, Kate. And hello, everybody. And thanks for joining us today. We've got quite a bit here, so I'm just going to run very briefly through the agenda. I will start off talking about some of the industry challenges, and I will be passing it over to Brian, who will talk about network services orchestration and how to implement it. Then Praveen will do a product overview of Anuta's NCX solution. Brian will do a demo and then talk about what is next for network orchestration. Then I will wrap it up and open it up for your questions. But please do submit them as we go along. So I'd like to start with a look at some of the challenges that service providers are dealing with. Uh, over on the left, you'll see that they're delivering a range of different types of services. Enterprise services include things like MPLS and increasingly SD-WAN. Security services such as firewalls are delivered to both enterprises and consumers. Mobile backhaul is becoming increasingly important with the explosion of mobile data from smartphones, tablets, and soon IoT as well. Video services make up a good chunk of operator traffic, both the over-the-top traffic coming from streaming services like YouTube and Netflix, as well as traditional TV over cable and fiber. Customers have been conditioned to expect rapid service delivery, and they want to access those services anywhere, at any time, and from any device. In order to accommodate this diversity and support increasing traffic volumes, service providers' networks also have to change and do so more frequently than in the past. All of this leads to increased operational complexity and the overhead is becoming a burden. Operators can no longer afford to manage their networks manually using proprietary management solutions. Rather, they're looking for more open and flexible orchestration platforms to more efficiently manage their, net their operations. This slide lays out how traditional provisioning uh, compares to network services orchestration. On the left, you see that configuring devices one by one leads to delays in service activation. Further compounding the issue is a lack of automation in those systems. And lastly, because proprietary management systems, because of proprietary management systems, each element must be managed separately, which again leads to costly software overhead. On the right, you see how network services orchestration takes a different approach. By using service templates, which mask the inherent difference between different vendor devices, configuration can be simplified and service activation times reduced. Cross-vendor provisioning processes work equally well against legacy networking devices, virtual networking services, and software-defined networking devices. With NSO, enterprises can start automating and orchestrating without having to retrofit their environments or wait for SDM projects to move through their natural life cycles. So before I turn over to Brian, I'm, we're going to take our first poll question. So we'd like to uh, know from the audience how familiar, how, excuse me, how familiar are you with network orchestration? Are you just learning about it? Are you evaluating vendors at this point? Are you already in production? Or do you think that uh, network orchestration is not appropriate for you? 
So while we wait for people to answer the question, I will throw it out to uh, to Brian and Praveen and see, um, you know, where do you, where do you think we are on the uh, on the on the curve for network orchestration right now? Would you imagine that most people are in the earlier stages, or do you think uh, you know people are already uh, well into production on this? So I think at some level, as Brian, uh, that we're going to see a, a pretty interesting mix. Uh, what I really hope to see in this particular audience set is that they're at the just learning or evaluating vendor stages. So we're going to share some insights to help them maybe uh, rapidly select some pro proper vendors and, and see where uh, we can help them move forward on their NSO desires. Okay. Well, let's um, let's take a look and see where where people are at. Oh, it's still still pretty early on. 44% um, say they're just learning about network orchestration. Um, just about a third are evaluating vendors, um, and actually we've got some 22% are in production, and only a handful say that um, network orchestration is not for them. So that's great. So um, at this point, I will hand it over to Brian. I will get the slide over and. Take it away. Great. Thank you, Roz. And uh, again, I'm Brian Fogg, the Chief Innovation Officer here at Technica. I'm pleased to be here with Roz and Praveen to share our insights and lessons learned around network service orchestration. It is a very interesting topic. It's very timely, and a lot of value uh, can be derived from it, and as we'll share those through the rest of the webinar. Starting from the right here, Roz addressed the adaptability from really two perspectives, accommodating or adapting to a diverse set of hardware, and to more rapidly provision new services through the great feature of templates, and we'll get into some of the specific examples of why those are important. Productivity on the left-hand side, not only does the output increase per person, but the nature of the staff can also change without compromising on quality. And quality is really the bridge between productivity and adaptability here, with the use of cleverly defined standard templates, a lot of the complexity inherent in multi-vendor configurations, and that is having different parameters, different command sets, different definitions, can be harmonized and reduced. So we, what we wanted to do is then talk about what is the net effect of moving through network services orchestration. And you can start with a concept of do more with less, or more likely, kind of what we see in practice is that you're gonna really do more with the same. So as the chart shows on the right, the actual number of staff, the workload associated with managing and operating these complex network environments, we can see dramatic reductions in the level of manual, uh, manual efforts as they move closer and closer to automated and orchestrated environments. And that allows the ratios, the uh, number of servers or number of devices, uh, in the case of uh, network class of devices, for admin to increase over time. We also tend to see the workload shifting the nature of the skills from traditional strong network engineering on the left through operations on the right. And so the net effect is that as staff increases, the demands on that gray curve kind of increase to the right, that there's a great ROI potential to be able to take the staff and reposition them to support these kinds of activities. So how does this happen? When we look at the set of desired network service orchestration features, we really want to take a look at this from a full life cycle perspective. And starting with traditional design, then creation, discover, assure, modify, and delete, across a really large set of interconnected devices. And these kind of environments tend to have uh, different sets of command parameters, different sets of user interfaces, and we want to make sure that we can try to drive those level of complexities out. We want to use these template-based service modeling really against any type of device. And so whether you're a Cisco shop, you have aspects of the Juniper framework, you have aspects of HP. As you look through, you want to be able to cover any of those as you go through and really provide this from an off-the-shelf support perspective so that service provisioning activities, the ability to work through topology and discovery support act, uh, efforts, if that's uh, not in your environment today, and really uh, try to achieve the FCAPS kind of model in a complete, clean way. 
But beyond these kind of device management activities, there's also the, the bottom three bullets there get to full programmability of these environments. And you're going to see later in slide 18 a discussion on analytics-driven service assurance. So not only can you help automate, but you can actually help make the network more intelligent, smarter, as it is uh, used and put into place, whether you're looking uh, to do that through full REST API integration, uh, whether you're looking to adapt comprehensive user-defined resource management techniques that you might already have in place, and whether you're really uh, able to pull us into an existing environment, the brown fields kind of view, or actually push to green fields, which is brand new. And assuming this sounds interesting, how do you move forward in these kind of decision cycles? What we found is that there's really two options that we tend to consider here as we look at ways to implement and select vendors to support NSO. You can look at the build versus buy, uh, and then the open source versus vendor specific kinds of environments. From a build versus buy perspective, we think the core focus there is whether the, the business of managing the network is your business, and that'll help decide whether you want to uh, engage or uh, run this, or you're really looking to have it uh, smoothly automated and orchestrated. The, the breadth and the depth of vendor support needed across your particular environment. So as you have more and, and varied types of devices, network service orchestration plays, pays bigger and uh, more interesting dividends over time. From an open source versus vendor selection, it really uh, comes down to a couple of things that we've seen a lot over time, that uh, your own support model, the, the level of appetite that you're willing to pay for community support, and, and how does that work, and how do you want to participate there, and how well is that infrastructure, even though it's open source, how is it fit for purpose? How does it help really uh, match and meet the particular unique needs of your environment? And then the next two there are related, the ease of configuration and customization and then time to market speed to implement. So uh, as the level of these kind of complex requirements grows, you want to have a way to manage that so you can get the right set of staff uh, doing the right set of activities when you need them. And then they both share the build versus buy, open source versus vendor, share a real common aspect, which is how you think through the total cost of ownership. So one of the core common considerations that, that we tend to uh, try to, to make sure our customers are thinking through is that free does not necessarily mean no cost. And so the initial acquisition and then ongoing operations is a real strong area to pay uh, attention to when you're running those cost models to compare. The next section is a little insight into the implementation of network service orchestration and what are some of the platform considerations that we tend to follow and recommend that uh, those folks that are on the early part of the life cycle, as Roz uh, was able to see in the uh, first poll question there, that these are the characteristics we tend to use. Uh, starting at the top there, uh, already kind of hit this a little bit, the breadth and depth of those vendor support needed. Uh, we want to be careful there about device lock-in. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, and there may be some questions from the audience that uh, get to this kind of point later. Uh, the need to do discovery, whether that's just an upfront kind of activity to discover what's in your environment or in your network versus ongoing support. Be able to scale to support not just physical devices, which is important, but also the continued movement towards virtualized appliances at uh, various tiers of your architecture. And then the ability to support legacy, proprietary, open, and emerging standards and interfaces as part of that network service orchestration platform suite. Uh, scalability to the size of the environments that you have, uh, validated service models so that as the kinds of infrastructure platforms you're trying to automate uh, roll out, that you have a way to test that as you go through its normal life cycle. And then the last two really get to the ease of use kind of question. And what we really like, and you'll see this later uh, in several slides, is that Anuda really maximizes the fit against these platform selection considerations for a wide variety of customer networks. And we're pretty excited to see how uh, they have uh, provided value into these complex network environments. From a high-level perspective, we tend to follow four steps through the network service orchestration lifecycle. Uh, focusing on the first two at the service design stage, 
uh, them working through the service deployment activities, and we'll get some more detail on how this looks a little bit later, and then running it through the, the tail end of a service management framework, traditionally uh, an ISO-based or ISO 20000-based kind of operational environment. And, and if this is the kind of the high-level mapping of how they lay out in practice, what I'd like to do is give you a sense from a more granular level, how might you uh, see this come into play? So our service development process here is really a precursor to some of the stuff that we're going to show later on slide 26. But starts to starts with gathering the requirements definitions of the devices and things that you're really focused on. So it's that uh, data, uh, data set and features in the first blue box at the bottom, the set of protocols that you need to support, and then moving them through the management framework to interface with those devices. So bringing in that CLI or API support, does it make sense through uh, Yang and NetComp, those uh, kind of modern features, and then allow those de device level services really then to push all the way to the right to the higher level delivery of services that are really on top of those devices and try to push that into a particularly operationally uh, driven environment. Uh, with that, I'll take a pause, uh, hand off to Roz, so we can look through the second poll question. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. So the next uh, uh, question for the audience is, which do you think is the most important criteria for choosing a network orchestration platform? Is it multi-vendor support? Is it brownfield support? Is it the ease of customization? Is it on-prem and cloud-based delivery models, or is it scale? And I can imagine that we probably will get a range here. Uh, and again, Brian and Praveen, um, you know, what, what, when you're speaking with potential customers, what is it that, that they're saying is the most important thing? This is Brian. Uh, I'll say that multi-vendor support is always uh, front and center on people's minds uh, when we have these discussions, as well as uh, the ease of customization, because even though there are common networking environments, every customer does have unique needs, and so they want to see a nice, nice path forward to see themselves represented on these platforms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Praveen, any thoughts on that before we look at the, what the audience said? Yeah, so we see the multi-vendor support as the biggest uh, draw in this equation. But beyond that, uh, depending on the customer, sometimes if it is an enterprise, uh, we are beginning to see um, more and more requests for a cloud-based delivery model so that um, some of the complexity of deploying the orchestration software and integrating with the ecosystem itself is uh, something that can be delivered out of the cloud and then the customers can just focus on their automation and orchestration. So that is something we have been seeing lately also. Okay, great. Well, let's take a look and see what the audience says. And again, by a long shot, it is multi-vendor support. Uh, then was ease of customization, which is what you were saying, Brian. Um, not so much on the cloud-based delivery just yet, but uh, I think that's, that's something that's, that's certainly emerging. Um, I'm actually surprised to see that Brownfield was so low. Um, because most of these environments are not uh, are not greenfield, um, although I, I have been hearing that people are perhaps starting with some uh, new services as opposed to trying to rush for fit legacy services. So, so this all all very interesting. Hopefully useful to you. So now I will hand over to Praveen, who will uh, talk uh, give you an overview of uh, Anuda's NCX uh, platform. Hi everyone, this is uh, Praveen Vengalam. I'm one of the co-founder and VP of engineering at Anuta. I'll walk you through the um, introduction of uh, NCX platform, the domain that it plays in, and uh, the high-level architecture. And I will also look through why the NCX uh, platform has been uh, chosen by some of our customers and also some use cases. So right up front, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the domains that we are playing in. Any large enterprise customers or any large SPs, MSPs, telcos that we are working with, they have these automation or orchestration needs that span across multiple of their internal domains. They may have a data center for their private cloud environment. They may have data center where they are providing services to their external customers. They may have uh, some workloads in the private cloud, maybe a branch automation, maybe a campus automation. There could be different endpoints in their IT infrastructure that are 
catering to the internal internal businesses or external businesses but ultimately there are a lot of automation needs and the use cases are different it could be application deployment in the data center it could be a hybrid cloud environment it could be l2 vpns it could be l3 vpns it could be a cpe management it could be behind the cpe the campus management ultimately there are multiple endpoints that need to be configured and in some scenarios it will be on each endpoint maybe we have to configure multiple features on the endpoint so with all of this complexity in mind and the fact that historically this used to be done using traditional scripting or manual automation and how the orchestration helps is i think something that brand has just walked through and we'll just take a look at it more and more and also the ncx platform has been uh, in play in op- in multiple of these domains in some of our customers and that's where the uh, the richness of the platform c- comes into play and the whole openness and being able to onboard multiple vendors being able to service chain any underlying device capability or any infrastructure for that matter is the strength of the platform and we also have open apis that allow us to go and deploy the software like headless uh, where we can go integrate with any uh, not bound system or in some cases where customers are interested they can consume pretty much all the capabilities using the ncx portal so in the subsequent slides we'll get into a slightly more detail so on this slide we're taking a look at the ncx high level architecture and as you can see from here uh, we offer a model driven layered and abstracted approach to service delivery and at the bottom of the screen we are seeing the infrastructure the physical infrastructure virtual infrastructure or it could even be vpn controllers and the, the underlying uh, uh, underlying power of the system comes from the so the underlying power of the systems comes from the fact that we can discover um, any inventory it could be the physical inventory or it could be the configuration or services that is already deployed in the on the underlying infrastructure so it could be through api it could be through cli it could be through yango or netconf ultimately we have pretty much the real time configuration and the operational and some of the telemetry data that is coming from the underlying infrastructure and this information uh, is taken into the ncx and we put that through a translation engine where we convert that to a common model so that's where the abstraction comes in and once the underlying device information is converted to a common model now we can take that information and do service chaining um, within one device multiple features or it could be multiple features across multiple endpoints or multiple devices it would not matter and that's where the strength of the platform comes in we support both greenfield and brownfield deployments uh, the fact that we can um, keep our inventory up to date with what's there on the device makes us uh, enable that and also um, there are a lot of other components in the ecosystem like ip address management systems like cmdb image management and external analytics and assurance platforms that provide specialized services maybe syslog collections there could be a lot of different components that we will have to integrate into uh, the overall I, uh, orchestration flow for example let's say we have to draw an ip address from an info box or a blue cat or some other custom ip address management solution that also forms part of the overall orchestration flow and all of these uh, pieces can be easily integrated into the orchestration platform and since we are delivering all of these capabilities um, out of a open model driven platform we also are capable of providing an api pretty much for all the capabilities of the ncx to the not bound systems and the same api is used by the ncx portal to deliver the model driven ui to the operations teams and also to the admins and then also to the end customer if at all they want to consume the services out of the ncx portal directly and the same rescon interface can be leveraged by the not bound oss portals self service portals to define and deliver services from the not bound systems into the ncx platform and then um, towards the to towards the in the in, in the high level picture i mean what we are delivering is a model driven and a layered and abstracted approach where uh, we bring in like a web vendor neutrality extensibility and maintainability of services um, in the overall life cycle of a service so on the ne- on the next slide we're going to see how uh, we can provide assurance so orchestration and assurance uh, are more uh, intertwined uh, because uh, once we uh, go and deploy a configuration the next aspect is we will need to verify if the configuration is working 
So historically, this was probably done by some of the diagnostic tools like show commands or probably ping trace route. There could be a lot of troubleshooting tools that help us do that. So the first part of assurance is to make sure whatever configuration or the or the policy that's deployed on the infrastructure, it stays deployed. So that is where we ensure that any configuration change that happens on the infrastructure can be recovered easily. That is something that we do by monitoring the device level modifications, device configuration modifications, and ro rolling back that changes if at all they're unwanted. And beyond that, we also ensure that whatever configuration has been uh, configured on the device, it stays deployed and it, it works as expected. And once the, once the configuration is deployed and it is it is it is it is working as expected, next is we will need to look at some of the telemetry data like operational data and some of the other statistics to make sure that it is performing. All the SLAs are performing as expected. And towards this end, we have a mechanism to monitor telemetry data and operational data and write, write uh, rules against it. And this is where the policy engine within the NCX comes into picture. And uh, the policy engine allows rules to be written on pretty much any of the data that is part of the NCX database. So going back to the prior uh, discussion, whatever information that we are able to collect from the underlying infrastructure and from the partner ecosystem, can be used to go and write these rules and the policies. And we also have a state machine where we can tie these events and the data that is coming or emitted across multiple endpoints into more like a state. So if an interface goes down on one device, followed by an interface going down on some other device, then perform this action. Those kinds of, uh, those kinds of rules and state machine can be articulated so that uh, we can go and uh, uh, perform assurance. And also, uh, we don't expect ourselves to be the sole collector. In some cases, there may be a specialized collection engine, like NetFlow collector, or there, there may be some, some, somebody else may be doing path computation, they may be doing advanced analytics. So we are uh, um, integrating into some of those platforms. We have an open API, both North, East, West, and South. That way, uh, we kind of provide a, a holistic approach to assurance. That is something of the, like apps can be, like assurance apps can be built within NCX, or data can be consumed to a uh, streaming interface from NCX so that they can be built externally. Both are possible. And why NCX? So one of the biggest thing is the multi-vendor nature and also the cross-domain nature. So customers don't want to deploy a different software, different automation or orchestration software for their different domains. So they want a single uh, orchestration solution to cater to their multiple domains, hybrid cloud, public cloud, private cloud, the core of the network, uh, data center interconnection, managed services, they just want one tool to go with. Because this again goes back to the fact that they have to train their internal DevOps teams, the operations teams, and one tool, if at all it can perform all of the, those jobs well, uh, that would be a predominant choice. And that's where we've, we've been able to shine. And also apart from that, uh, being able to provide feature velocity, how quickly you can allow the customer to um, design, um, develop, and uh, productize a service. And also common models. We have taken uh, great uh, care to build uh, common models for a lot of web vendors, like switching, routing, load balancing, firewall, uh, VPNs. A lot of those capabilities are already converted to common models across the very common uh, vendors out there. And uh, service model definition is going to be sitting on top of these common models so that uh, feature velocity is, uh, is, is pretty good. And all of this, we should be able to deploy out of a highly scalable and availability uh, availability architecture. That is something that uh, is also very key to the NCX platform. And all of this also through a microservices-based model and also an open standards-based uh, model like uh, IETF Yang. And th these are some of the reasons why NCX has been chosen um, by, our, by, by, by our customers. So on this slide, let's take a look at one of our large deployments at Tata Communications. Data Communications is providing managed services to their uh, end customers through a self-service portal. And NCX is the orchestration platform of choice here. And uh, Data, Communication, Data Communications has operations across multiple uh, geographical locations, uh, 130 countries in all. And NCX is deployed globally. Um, the NCX server deployed in a uh, highly available mode, uh, both in the in the in the, in the Asia TAC region and in the North American region. And they manage pretty much all of these things centrally where they have a integration into their OSS portal and then the self-service portal ties into that. 
and then ncx agents get deployed uh, geographically uh, distributed so that they can stay closely uh, located to the network elements so in this scenario they are providing the cpe management at this at this in the initial production and as we are going further we are also operationalizing the van optimization as a part of the use case and then we are also going to be orchestrating the virtual van optimization and also we are going to be deploying the virtual van optimization uh, as vnfs in the public cloud also in the amazon web services and uh, at, this, at, this, at this time uh, the customer is uh, automating more than 85% of the cpe configuration and it's only going to get better from here and as you can see physical cpe where brownfield discovery is taken care and 85% configuration and then comes the hybrid cpe where we have the virtual van up and then the cloud based uh, uh, van up will be coming into this uh, production deployment also okay on the next slide uh, similar use case but a significant uh, uh amount of orchestration in the data center in this scenario whenever a tenant is onboarded um the customer in this scenario has to onboard uh, some virtual elements like a virtual arc site and a virtual info blocks so they have to go and deploy some virtual elements in the data center for each of the customer that's being onboarded and also uh, in this scenario we are looking at a fairly large uh, deployment and uh, yeah so we also have cisco and then juniper providing the virtual branch services here and the juniper is controlled through the juniper cso and the cisco is controlled through um, the directly to the ncx using their traditional management interfaces and on the juniper front we work with the juniper cso to be able to orchestrate the the, the branch uh, automation the branch device automation but ultimately in this scenario what we are looking at is a variety of ways to uh, automate so data center elements physical and virtual and then um, the cpe elements through the controller or directly managing the cpe node so let's go to the next slide so on this slide we're looking at the nfe use case and the telestra is uh, providing um, a virtual branch solution to their retail customers and uh, the platform of choice is openstack as the as the virtual infrastructure manager and the kvm as a hypervisor so telstra has a back office where they onboard the kvm they onboard some of the uh, some of the virtual infrastructure manager components and then uh, they ship this equipment to the customer they have a plug and play that comes in and then we go deploy the vnfs on demand and once the vnfs are deployed we go and uh, orchestrate the services on top by doing the service chaining and then the policy on top so th this is an up and coming use case uh, this is in a uh, pilot stage now and uh, this is getting more and more traction in, in the industry as we speak and the, it's also important to note here that uh, the anuta ncx platform has a built in vnf manager that uh, will allow um, some of the vnf bring up vnf scale out and scale in to come in okay. and the use case for here is uh, with f5 this is one of the recent announcements uh, we have made and in this case customer has a data center where they are providing ddos as a service out of their cloud environment and they have uh, multiple different vendors that uh, are being orchestrated in this in this flow and as you can see from here some of the key criteria for this customer is being able to provide uh, the device and topology abstraction and the, then configuration auditing and reconciliation and of course service orchestration across multiple endpoints um, is always being is always there so on this slide we're going to summarize pretty much uh, what ncx is about it provides a open standards based uh, approach to service modeling device modeling and putting complete control in the hands of the customers if at all they have a devops team or providing uh, out of the box solutions like l2 vpn l3 vpns using the ietf uh, published models to some of the customers and also providing the software across multiple domains uh, campus branch wireless min mobile it said it should not matter and all of this uh, at scale is what the ncx platform is good at okay and uh, over to uh, ross uh actually i think we are going to brian for the demo correct yes great yes 
Thanks, Roz and uh, Praveen. So what I wanted to do is give a quick sense of what the demos might look like uh, around this particular technology set. So what I wanted to do is give uh, just a definition a little bit around what this might look like. So this is a pretty common demo environment that we stand up here at Technica. We have a, a full suite of multi-vendor demonstration engineering labs that we tend to uh, get in front of our customers or potential customers. And we think this is the best way to really highlight the power of Anuda NPX is to see it in action. And I really invite the audience to reach out to us after the webinar and we can talk through opportunities of how to make that happen. This scenario we're showing here is a, a pretty common kind of framework where on the left we have a traditional web server in this case showing up as a desired capability that the web request, the client on the right hand side is trying to reach. And so this heterogeneous mix of vendor equipment, if you can look across here, as well as protocols, management interfaces, really is set up to support this auto provisioning in a layered way to support a variety of, of infrastructure at the MPLS level and then to push out towards those edge services and to be able to bring this under uh, all automa uh, automation orchestration control to be able to reach that end web service in a fully automated way. So this is uh, an interesting example here as you look and see the equipment. There's virtualized assets. There's assets that understand NetConf and Yang. And there's uh, other ones that are just command line or CLI interface only as it goes through its particular example sets. And uh, we don't really have a, enough time today to do this uh, as a full demo, but these tend to be the types of things that would show up in the particular demonstration capabilities that we show. Uh, go through a strong set of templates so that you can see how to build up not just the device level abstraction through the templates, but actually think through the, the core services that you're deploying across those sets of devices. As you develop those templates, uh, what we found is a really great uh, way to reduce the complexity of adding those circuit parameters into those templates. So as your operators are working and trying to configure out these devices, uh, they're able to query back to the CMDBs. They can get the right actionable data that they need to help them really support standing up the service quickly, but if you remember back in the beginning, at high quality. So as we push through being able to uh, reduce those, those type in errors or make those uh, operators feel much more effective as they push. And we do like to really also highlight that these workflow status opportunities that not only do you see these in action, but there's uh, direct feedback as the workflows are executed and pushed through their life cycle. And one of the, the great features of these kinds of systems is that you have the transactional semantics around them. So uh, if a, a complex workflow is running and there are issues, then it has a clean rollback path. So getting back to the last known good state is a, another great feature set as we push through and look at uh, network service orchestration and how uh, Anuda uh, is a great technology platform to build that uh, kind of framework on top of. And there's uh, some other advanced topics. You got a sense of this already with Praveen talking through uh, analytics-based service assurance. So it's more than just compliance and remediation, really can make it actionable intelligence to fine tune and uh, optimize your network environments. Uh, there's also other opportunities to extend not just the network uh, elements in here, but also data center oriented elements. And Technica has a solution that extends this uh, service orchestration capability out to compute and storage components as well. So you can really get uh, to a, a rich end-to-end -end orientation of delivering these kinds of services to also include SDN integration. So it's not uh, an opportunity where we see uh, SDN as being outside of this. It's a, a fully uh, managed aspect of how this infrastructure can roll forward, uh, get it into these pilot and prototyping capabilities, and uh, also think through adding container support and those kind of uh, more advanced feature sets in the compute side of the equation. So I wanted to reiterate uh, a couple of quick items of how you get from design to operation. Uh, you want to start at those service levels that you're really trying to implement. Look at the features, common uh, things that can flow into other aggregate templates and specific by the areas that you're in. Determine that mix of physical and virtual objects and attributes. 
be able to model and test, as you heard from Praveen, and then really get that deployment uh, out there rapidly to get it into service. And so if you wrapped all of those kind of capabilities up, starting at the lower right-hand corner, you end up with a better, faster, cheaper environment that also encompasses lower risk because you're driving through software-defined policies, uh, you're removing errors from a, a people orientation, a data entry orientation, and really looking to support not only just those validation but rollback opportunities as these uh, kind of solutions roll forward. So we're very excited uh, about the potential. Uh, we're excited about what we're seeing happen in the market right now. I thank you for your attention, and I'll hand it back to Ron to uh, run through the last few slides. Um, thank you, Brian. I think, uh, Praveen, you were going to speak to uh, the value prop, and I will wrap it up at the end. Sure. Uh One second. Yeah. So, Anutas value proposition is uh, uh, like provide, being able to provide uh, multi-vendor orchestration for pretty much uh, any uh, involved uh, automation need the customer may have. And I think it's just a matter of uh, converging the traditional DevOps and then IT ops and cloud ops into a framework where we can define and deliver services out of a single pane of glass. And all of this also keeping in mind that uh, it's not just deploying the configuration, it's just uh, also being able to assure the service on an ongoing basis. And uh, that's, where, that's where the strength of the platform and also the industry is m moving towards. And uh, that's about it. Uh, Ross, I think any other questions? Yeah, I think just the last thing I would just add there is the uh, just the fact that you know that that by using the network services orchestration, you can get the the cross vendor and the cross technology provisioning across both the physical and virtual uh, networks, and uh, just by adopting these policy driven op operations, that CSPs can automate and orchestrate their network services with greater flexibility and agility than they could before. So I think with that, we will take a look to see uh, what kind of questions have been coming in. I've been seeing this thing pop up. So let's take some questions. Um, OK, does the NCX assure SLAs through tight monitoring and audit? Please elaborate. So maybe uh, I think maybe this is a question for Raveen. I I'll take that. Uh, I'll take that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we do. Uh, we actually uh, monitor monitor the infrastructure. We get uh, pretty much the SNMP traps, sys logs, and any of the telemetry data out there. We can absorb that into the system. And uh, apart from absorbing that into the system, we also convert it into a model, like a vendor neutral representation. So that's going to allow us to go and write rules on top. Uh, that can uh, be vendor neutral themselves, and we can go and uh, um, like have a multiple conditions work, and then we can actually go and say uh, once when these conditions meet, uh, go and perform action. And I think yeah, I mean as we illustrated before, I mean we, we we are not the only collector out there, and in some cases we will have specialized collectors, and we go integrate into those specialized collectors. But ultimately, we can bring all of the decision making process come together in the orchestration platform, uh, no matter who is the collector. OK, thank you. Um, let's see. Can the, can the NCX orchestrator control and manage multi-vendor physical network infrastructure via an SDN controller? Um, this person was saying either, the, either an ODL or an ONO space controller. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that question, Russ. So we do, um, we already have integration into different uh, SDN controllers. Uh, we have integration into the Cisco APIC platform, the Juniper Contrail, the CSO, and then uh, Nuage. We have done these integrations uh, already, and what typically uh, it boils down to is uh, the controllers are going to provide specific capabilities, and uh, on top of which we will need, we will still need to go and create differentiated service catalogs, and that's where the NCX platform comes in. And also the controllers typically don't orchestrate all the endpoints. I mean, they may be able to take care of the switching fabric or the routing fabric, 
but being able to bring in like multiple vendors like uh, load balancers firewalls proxies ipam dns certificate management so there are going to be a lot of other components that need to be brought together and that's where the orchestration platform is pretty much indispensable okay thank you um got a question for Brian um did you have hands on experience with uh Cisco's NSO and can you compare that at all with the Anuda and CX solution Absolutely thank thanks for uh doing that question you know this is a, a great opportunity where uh really looking across the set of vendors that are out there uh and being able to put them in the labs and actually run them through their paces and be able to put them across these these network environments is a really great way to, to prove out uh, what are the capabilities. So we've worked through and done Blue Planet, Blue Networks, TLF. So TLF being uh, uh, a recent or near recent acquisition through Cisco. It's a great opportunity to really put these in here. And what we found, and when we compared these head to head, we really liked all of the rich feature sets that come with the Anuda platform, uh, the ease of implementation. uh running through the workflows and developing them and to really see how these could work in a in a real enterprise environment and there's also uh, uh the the issues of uh integrating across other end to end solutions so just as uh, Praveen was talking about being able to hit those firewalls load balancers and other equipment in a clean way uh, is a real nice hallmark of the Anuda platform okay thanks for that um let's see um can you comment on how ncx would integrate with uh oss and bss platforms i think this is probably a praveen or brian i don't know if you can speak yeah that. i think i'll take that i'll take that so okay. we have an we have an open we have an open api uh, pretty much all the device capabilities are um, are opened up through the through the the rescon interface and the this this can be used to pretty much integrate into any not born system our customers have been able to already integrate this into their uh, home grown uh, oss portals and the, some of the other portals that this has been integrated in some scenarios is the service now and the bmc remedies some of these uh, integrations have been done and typically this is something that the customers do because uh, they pretty much know what aspects of the ncx need to be integrated into their oss and for example that n6 portal also provides significant capabilities so not all things are integrated up up not only a few things and did customer select what aspects need to be integrated but we've been fairly successful in that scenario and if if i may I'll, i'll add from a technica perspective what's great here is this is really a hallmark of technica as a company so working with our federal government customers being able to come in and do assessments to understand the state of their current OSS uh to be able to provide recommendations on path forward to really engineer and architect where they ought to be going focusing kind of on uh a skating analogy is we want to make uh recommendations while I'm skate where the puck is going not where it's at and this is a great opportunity to take not only real world large scale DOD uh experience but tied into the best of commercial offerings at this point Okay, great. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Boy, there's quite a few coming in here. Let me take a look here. Um Let's see. Oh, here's another here's one for you, Brian. Um I see OTAs are mentioned. Can you provide a bit more detail on how the US federal government can use them? Oh, great. Thanks. Uh what I like about the OTAs or the other transactional authorities is that they're an acquisition mechanism that allows the government to really prove out pilot and test these capabilities against their specific unique needs. Uh so we're a, a member of C5 and Seed. These are uh part of the uh, other, uh sorry and the other SOSEC so these OTA vehicles together really allow these requirements to come out. It's a simple way for the customers to push through their requirements through a white paper and to allow us to uh from the commercial industry side really put these solutions in front of them. So it's a, a great way to look at our website for more information or again reach out to us and we can provide you more specific detail around how C5, SOSEC uh and other OTAs tend to work. Okay, thank you. Let me see if I've got anything for Prophene. Um 
Oh, yeah, this is a pretty uh, pretty, pretty straightforward one. Uh, Praveen, what is the largest NSX, NCX production deployment that you have so far? We have a uh, few of the large MSPs have deployed over 10,000 uh, uh, so far, and that number is expected to come up to 20,000 uh, shortly. Um, let's see. Okay, this is uh, an interesting one, I think. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, how do you ensure um, the uh, the skill sets required to run your uh, the uh, NCX? Um, this is something I know that so, comes up with with this whole move to 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 some different kinds of orchestration solutions. Uh, this skill set issue. So, let's see if you guys want to answer that one. Yeah, so the whole uh, model-driven approach and the orchestration has picked up quite a bit in the industry lately. Um, Open Config and then IETF did a lot of activity happening. So from the Anuta side, uh, we have a certification process and a training program that we train our, our customers and partners. And our partners themselves go, go and train their end customers. And this is something that we've been able to do it successfully. I, I would also add that uh, on slide seven, we really got to a, a chart that talked about the shifting nature of the skills. And so what we see is that traditional strong network engineering requirements are still there in terms of skill and capabilities. They tend to push early in the life cycle when you're setting up the workflows, setting up the templates, and working through that business logic, uh, really that model-driven approach that Praveen was talking about. And then that allows really, uh, once the templates are operated or need to be operated upon, that the nature of that skill set becomes less technical and more operational, and we think that's a great way for our customers to really fine tune, to really optimize their staffing profiles, to put the real strong engineering expertise where they need it, and to allow operators to be more efficient with their time and their capability to deliver these kinds of services. Great, thanks. Thanks for adding that, Brian. Um, actually, I have another one for you. Um, from my experience, getting CLIs and more modern interfaces to work together can be problematic. How easy is it to see uh, this, uh, the Anuta platform in action? So, uh, thanks. Uh, the slide 26 that we walked through, we're working through the demo. That's exactly why we have our demo environment set up and our engineering labs in place. Let's put us through the set of paces with the set of equipment that does bring this right to the forefront. So whether you're uh, looking at things that are fairly modern or driving back to even some interesting legacy equipment that has just a CLI, uh, the Anuta platform supports all of them, uh, pushes through, and can run across a diverse set. So we invite you to reach out to us if you'd like to see it in action. Uh, we're very excited about it, and uh, we can run through some interesting scenarios. Okay. Um, oh, here's this is an interesting one as well. I think does SDN obviate the need for orchestration? I think, yeah, I think that's a, something to say on that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, a great question. And the byline I'd have people remember here that this is really not SDN or orchestration. This is SDN and orchestration. And so we approach this from an orchestrator of orchestrators perspective, and SDN is a great capability set, and Praveen uh, did talk about having those interfaces that uh, can push through the routing and switching fabric, but at the end of the day, you want to get these policies implemented and controlled across a diverse set of equipment, so those heterogeneous environments. So we think it's really, uh, uh, no, it does not obviate it. In fact, we can enhance it and uh, custom uh, customers can uh, enhance their enterprise orientation by really bringing these tools to bear on these kind of environments. Okay. Um, I don't know if to, Praveen, did you uh, want to add anything to that to that question? Yeah, I think uh, Brian got it, and then I, that question uh, came up already. I think we are good, uh, Ross. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, Let's give it another minute or so. Um, while we wait, I wanted to uh, just remind folks to please do take the survey at the end. Uh, like Kate said, it's very, uh, very helpful for us to to know what works, and um, and it'll help us as we create additional ones. Um, let's see. I think. 
Yeah, I think that is it for the questions. So unless uh, Praveen or Brian had anything, I think um, that we'll be ready to, to wrap up. Yeah, I had nothing uh, further. I just thank people uh, for participating through the, uh, the hour. Uh, we're pretty excited about the technology and the capability here and invite you to reach out if there's anything that intrigued you. Okay. Well, thanks again, everybody. I yeah, hope you found it useful and uh, hope to see you on another, another uh, webinar soon. Thanks very much, everybody, and have a good day. Thanks, everyone.